are you doing today? I am here <laughs> after having a couple months off from recording, so hopefully you still recognize me. Um, so this is my first video in a long while, and I know a lot of you guys have been asking um, where I have been and if everything is okay. So I thought I would get on here and start back up. Um, with an update video um, on where I have been. So, yeah. Okay, so it has been about two months since I have recorded. Um, obviously, the school year started, and if you are a teacher, know anybody that is, you know that that is literally insane um, for anybody that is in education. So I had a couple of things going on. Um, first of all, I had to move classrooms. And so that doesn't seem like it would be a big deal, but you have to go into school about two weeks before the other teachers show up, which is a week before the kids show up. So um, you basically start school about three weeks before anybody else. And for one, I had to unpack everything, which when you've been teaching for six, seven years, and teaching multiple subjects, um, that's a lot of stuff. So like you have to undo your classroom library. It's a brand new room, so you gotta figure out how do I wanna set up my desk? How is this gonna function? Where am I gonna put this? Where am I gonna put that? Where am I gonna put this where the kids can get to it? Um, and so it's a lot of work. Um, there for about a week or two trying to get my new room set up. I was probably working like 12 to 13 hours just trying to get ready. Um, and that was before the kids even showed up. And then this year I am also teaching three subjects and um, I used to teach elementary school so I was kind of used to that but I've been teaching middle school for the last couple of years and um, it's been like teaching math and then one course of history and so I I've had that under control, but then they totally changed the history standards. They got rid of our textbook, and now we have a digital tech book. Um, so the standards are totally new. The text is totally new, and I have to get used to uh, training the kids on a Chromebook, which is a nightmare, um, especially when the internet goes down. And so I have that going. So also instead of two subjects, math, which I've always done, history, which I've done, but it's absolutely brand new this year because it's totally different standards. Before we used to do world history, now I'm doing ancient civilization so I'm teaching about like Mesopotamia and stuff I've never taught that before so I have to learn it before I teach the kids um, and so that's taking a lot of hours just to plan um, and then not only am I teaching two subjects they threw a third subject on me um, but I feel like a first-year teacher all over again having to create everything for the first time uh, trying to learn what in the world I'm supposed to be teaching um, it's just it's insane so your public school teacher uh, definitely work hard. Um, this is so not a rant or, or talking bad about the educational system, but it is just the reality of life for a public school teacher. So um, it has literally been insane this year and I am kind of like just in survival mode. It's like, it's just week by week, day by day trying to get through three subjects and two of which are brand new. Um, on the lighter side, of course, my children are amazing and beautiful and fabulous and hilarious and precious and wonderful. And they are the literally only reason I get up in the morning and go do what I do. Okay, so second of all, another thing that has been literally devouring my time other than work is I have been working, as you guys know, towards therapy dog certification. Um, and in September, my dog actually passed her control evaluation. Um, but before she passed that test, I had to do a lot of training to get her to pass that test. Um, it was two times a week and the training facility was about an hour there and an hour back. So twice a week, Wednesday and Saturday morning, I was driving an hour to class, having an hour class, driving an hour back. So three hours and three hours again, twice a week um, to get her ready for the test. She did pass the test on her first try, but when you pass the test, that doesn't mean they're done. Um, after they pass a control evaluation, that just allows them to go forward and do supervised visits. So after she passed her control evaluation, um, 
she had to do 10 hours of supervised visits before she could actually be certified as a therapy dog. And so these visits, you have to be signed off by a member of the organization. And so I had to drive an hour to the visits, do an hour and a half visit, drive an hour back. So you can imagine that was once a week and it would eat up like literally four hours my entire evening. I And the second I would get home, it would be time to go to bed. So um, that has been the last 10 weeks of going to do these supervised visits and um, she is done. So we are almost a certified therapy team and I'm so, so happy and so, so proud of her. Um, but I've, I've officially sent off her paperwork. Everything is signed, sealed, and hopefully delivered. I took it to the post office. Um, so in four to six weeks, hopefully we will be legitimate um, and I will have my ID badge. She will have her ID badge and then I can just do more community work, uh, volunteer work, uh, just to help people. So um, we will be legit and certified uh, hopefully in four to six weeks. So if you guys would like to kind of know more about like the therapy dog process, I am telling you if I would have known what I was signing up for when I created this goal in my mind, I would not have done it. Um, but when I set my mind to something, I do it. And so my goal was to have her therapy dog certified before she is two. She will be two in February. So I made my goal with a couple months to spare, but it has been literally grueling and exhausting. It has been a completely uh, sapping process um, to do all of the training and the evaluation and the supervised visits. It is an awful lot. So when you see people with therapy dogs, don't think it happens overnight. Those people have worked their ever loving butt off to get those dogs certified. Um, so yeah, that finally is over, which is probably the only reason why I'm actually able to record again. And last but not least, um, as far as the personal aspect of my life, I've just really been getting myself together or trying to. Um, so you guys know I lost my grandpa in May and you know, it's kind of like, People think that when you're over 10, that losing your grandparents should be like, ah, you know, not a big deal. It's just, I lost my grandparent. Well, it's really unfair because my grandpa, I, I mean, I spent time with my grandpa. When I grew up, we literally were neighbors and I have spent, you know, twice a week seeing him my, like my entire life life. I mean, one of the first men you, men you ever love is your grandpa and your dad. And I needed some time to just kind of just decompress, just not have to worry about, oh, I, got, I need to upload this. I need to upload that. I need to get that edited. I just like literally I could not do it. I could not get the energy. I could not get the motivation. I didn't want to come on here and be a depressed, crying sob story. I want to be uplifting and cheerful for you guys because that's what you deserve. And I just, I just literally couldn't do it. And then it's like, okay, I'd feel like, oh yeah, I'm gonna upload a video. And then you get online and and you have people saying, oh, you're so annoying. Your voice annoys me. You play with your hair too much. You say um too much. And it's like, I'm sitting here grieving and I log into YouTube and all I get is just poison, you know, vomited onto me, hateful words. And it's just like, you know what? Why? Like, why? Why am I doing this to myself? It's stupid. And I know you hear people saying that all the time. Oh, I'm gonna quit YouTube. And like a lot of people will make like a quitting YouTube video, just have people like suck up to them and be like, please don't. I didn't do any of that. Um, I just, I didn't, I didn't even want anything to do with it. And I know that if you're watching this, you are probably amazing and I love you. And I so completely appreciate you guys checking on me. Sean, I love you. I just, I have, you know, I, you understand. I don't even, you know, we're like this. I don't even have to explain it because I know you understand. Um, bad enabler, sit maybe. And you guys, I you get it. Like, so it takes a lot of courage to put yourself on camera. And when you are a keyboard warrior and you um, just say nasty things about people, even if it is through YouTube, people read their comments. And if you were to say something like that to someone in real life, you'd probably get your freaking head knocked off. So it's kind of like, what makes it okay to just say like, and I'm not talking just like constructive feedback because constructive feedback on a video is welcome and helpful. But when you say how disgusting or ugly or annoying or stupid someone is, that is spitting poison. She sounds so therapeutic, doesn't she? Such a therapy dog. <laughs> 
like it would hurt my feelings and I'm like this is so stupid this is someone I don't know someone I will never meet but it takes a lot of courage to put your face in front of hundreds thousands of people it takes a lot of courage and when someone personally attacks you and like I said not just oh hey your video is blurry you can say whatever you want about me but one thing you cannot say about me is that I am mean and hurtful to other people because I never once never once have posted a comment, a negative comment like that on anybody's video ever. It just kills YouTube and YouTube is such a blessing. You learn so much and get so many wonderful ideas, but so many good YouTubers that I follow or that I have subscribed to have quit YouTube because stupid ignorant people can't follow the golden rule of if you don't have anything nice to say, keep your mouth shut. It's really not hard. It's really not hard. That was going on. It was just a struggle. And if you put out videos on YouTube, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. And so on a final note, I will end this on a more uplifting note. Um, I have started dating again. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And um, so yeah, that has been an adventure. And um, God does some very surprising things and brings people in your life that you would have never expected. Um, so long story short, uh, shortly after my grandfather passed, I felt very alone. And one of the only people that checked on me or checked on my mom or my family or anybody, one of the only people that cared enough to check on me, like I'm talking about in, in my real life, was my high school sweetheart. It's so hilarious. And we have not dated for 10 years. Both of us were in like five year relationships. Um, and so it just so happened, I he was single at the time, I was single at the time. And uh, he was one of the only people, you know, having not talked to him in 10 years, um, he was one of the only people that cared. and. It just meant a lot. So, you know, we just started talking as friends and you know, here we are. <laughs> so it's just crazy. I could tell you more about that story. That's like a whole another video, but it's just really a hilarious thing. He's got two boys and they are the most precious, adorable, sweet little perfect things I have ever seen. And um, it's just, crazy, unexpected, out of left field, but so fantastic. And yeah, it's just been very much needed. And it's just like the support I needed at the right time. I've just been rambling, but um, thank you so much to everybody that has been checking on me and making sure I'm okay. I've been here, I've been burning candles. I will try to do just a whole bunch of random like <laughs> mash up catch up videos to kind of get up to date and current on everything. Some of them might be archaic and outdated by this point, um, like talking about some of the collections, like that everybody's just over it as far as those candle collections because so many new ones have came out. But um, also, give you guys my two cents if you care and um so yeah just expect like a whole bunch of videos like per night over the next three or four nights um leave your comments below if you have any other questions i'm sorry to have left you guys hanging but again i didn't want to do a i'm quitting youtube video because like it was none of it was it was really nobody's business and i didn't want sympathy and i didn't want people begging me to stay because i'm just not that kind of person i don't need someone to stroke my ego and so i just you know i just i I just was having a rough couple months. <laughs> so, um, yeah, hopefully everything will calm down now. And um, I just, I love you guys so much. Thank you for everything. I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video. I'm going to try to record a couple tonight to get started on the process of getting caught up. So, bye.